Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with the Saints Row 3 Remaster. If you enjoy this video, please commit several war crimes and then take as many media interviews as possible, using your brief moment in the spotlight to aggressively promote my content, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Ah, Saints Row 3, what a throwback. This is a remaster, so the graphics aren't amazing, and sure, the frame rate sometimes drops lower than the age of consent in Romania, but it's a load of fun. I also think we can all appreciate that literally every female character in this game has a thick, juicy, busty love for our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Alright, so first thing, I've got to create my character. I accidentally make him look like an unlikable frat boy named Chase, so I try and balance out the cringe by setting his emote as the Carlton Dance. I am the feared leader of the Third Street Saints gang. It's time to go and meet up with my mate Stealth Omato and oh my days. It's genuinely hard to find the words to describe this. You know the only thing sadder than this man's love life is the first 10 minutes of the movie up. He is surprisingly agile for a big man though, I'll give him that. We seem to already be pretty hated by the feds because we shot loads of them in the face, I guess. But anyway, first things first, we need to buy some fresh clothes. Storyline wise, our gang has been kicked to the curb and we're trying to re-establish ourselves as the alpha gamers. This game is kind of like Grand Theft Auto's hyperactive cousin who abuses attention deficit disorder pharmaceuticals, but I'm okay with that. We pull over, and I try to coax Marto into jumping off this bridge because KYS pranks are very in season right now. He says the game won't let him. So I try to jump, and I successfully do so. Wow, bamboozled by a milady type, that hurts. We arrive at the Planet Saints clothing store, which is weirdly my own gang's brand label. We're kind of like a celebrity gang or something, I don't know. In the tutorial mission, we robbed a bank with our right hand man, Johnny Gat. And we wore giant Johnny Gat masks to hide our identity. Disguising yourself as yourself, that's a huge play. During the bank heist, I was even signing autographs. People really love us. Unfortunately for the fan, my girl Shandi is a bit on the jealous side, which isn't fantastic for her overall health, but still, we're apparently kind of a big deal. Anyway, my goal is to make myself look a little bit less like a frat boy and a little bit more like a respectable citizen. I feel that I somewhat achieved this goal, but nothing could have prepared me for this. Stealth Omato is the ultimate troll. I think he's successfully created the worst video game avatar I have personally ever seen. He's 10% cuck, 20% refills, 50% simping over online e-girls, 5% depressor, 15% lame, and 100% reason why abortions shouldn't be illegal. He says he'll change, and while he does that, I head outside to meet some of the good people of Stillwater City. I've never been that great with the ladies, that's why I was happy when my mum organised an arranged marriage for me. I remember the first time I met my now wife was at the wedding altar. She leaned over and whispered in my ear, Help, your mum's crazy, she kidnapped me, this isn't even a part of our culture. And I couldn't help but giggle in joy because in that moment, I knew she was the one. Anyway, things have really escalated as I've started some sort of gang war. Stealth Omato saves me and he is now happy with his appearance, featuring a dominant green fedora even though our gang colour is purple. Let's not overthink it. We proceed to do what any real gamer does when they first play an open world game. Run around being as violent as possible. Despite this being incredibly good cardiovascular exercise, we need to go and meet our boy Pierce, one of the gang's lieutenants. He's found this sedan for us and wants to modify it. Now I didn't just recently break into the top 10 best Eastern Mediterranean cooking YouTube channels because I lacked the ability to modify a fully sick car. I proceed to modify perhaps the most generic sedan you've ever seen, but she'll get us from A to B. B being the Planet Saints clothing shop again, wow. But I guess this is what unscripted organic gameplay looks like. I put a basketball jersey over my shirt, which is questionable, and then the Hulk attacks us. This big girl is literally throwing cars around, which is quite badass. Not as badass as me though. The other day I scanned my avocados as potatoes at the self-serve checkout, and when I walked out, I looked directly into the bag checker's eyes and said, thank you, have a great day. Easiest $2.40 I've ever saved. 
JJ mission complete and we get paid in the currency of the streets. Respecting women. I'm liking Mato's new ninja look, but I'm not liking this apartment. I feel like an internationally famous gang should live somewhere a little bit more luxurious. That being said, in one of the cutscenes earlier, my character tried to withdraw literally $1 million from an ATM. So I believe he lacks the core concept of, I guess, money? I test to see if I can upgrade the apartment and I instead access the garage and drive out in, I kid you not, a heavily Third Street Saints decorated tank. My boy Pierce just had me spend all my money on a family sedan, yet we had this stored in the guest car park all along. We need a hierarchy restructure, but anyway, things just turned up to 11 out of 10. Everything about this gameplay moment is completely immersive except for Stealthomato's purple cat backpack. I mean, come on, a purple cat? That's not at all believable, there's no such thing as purple cats, wow. They try to market this game as the most realistic World War II shooter of the decade, but quite frankly, my immersion is ruined. I decide to see if the tank is amphibious, which it is not. The only thing that could beat us was a freshwater river. How poetic. Piers says he may know how we can upgrade our crib. Actually, no, I'm too white to say crib. Upgrade our principal place of residence for tax purposes. First though, he wants us to go on a reality game show and I'm low key hoping for The Bachelor. I'd love for Mato to be The Bachelor so I could watch him get friend zoned by 30 different women. Let's be real though, this is Saints Row, of course the game show is excessively violent. We have to dodge traps, fire, and also kill these people in mascot costumes with actual real bullets. What the holy heck is going on here? I'm now riddled with guilt. Taking another human's life for entertainment? This is barbaric and honestly a human rights issue. The commentator then says, all of the mascots are just homeless people and thank God, dude, that's a huge weight off my shoulders. With that done, it's time to find ourselves a new home. One of our rival gangs has a multi-story penthouse and we're about to crash what looks like an extremely non-family friendly event. Kanye's song Power starts pumping out of nowhere and quite frankly it turns this mission into one of the most epic things I've ever played. Of course for copyright reasons I can't share this amazing experience with you, I can only describe how good it was, so yeah. If you could please just use your imagination and sort of envisage how dope this could be for you right now. But of course it's not, it's just my voice. I think there's a lesson to be learned here though. As a game developer, if you want a mission to pop off, just play a banger in the background. The next time I have post-marital sex, I'm just going to put on an absolute tune to try and make things seem more epic. In fact, I'll put on 25 second edited versions of the songs I play so it seems as if I'm lasting an impressively long time. Damn, music is a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's at this moment, Mato and I discover our favorite game mechanic yet. I don't know why this is so satisfying, but sometimes the best things in life are the simplest. We kill about 50 more incredibly thick villains. I actually don't think the invention of the female jeans or church sweaters ever made it to Stillwater, but look, these outfits are great for summer. The mansion is now ours, and finally the homies and I have a place to strategically plan our next calculated hostile takeover. Just kidding, penthouse high, which means it's a great place to throw. Watching a fat man throw another fat man off a balcony, it's these moments that make you believe in a higher power. I love our new mansion, but here at Moist Penguin Gaming, we focus heavily on censorship, and a little birdie told me there's a strip club down the road. Now unless the strippers have married all of their clientele in some sort of mass Mormon relationship, it sounds like we've got ourselves a classic case of premarital lap dancing going on, boys and girls. It's time to investigate, and what better vehicle to take than the customized Saints VTOL Jet. Yes, I said VTOL Jet. You'd think this would be an end game reward, but nope, it's good to go right now. I've actually got a lot of experimental weaponry now, like this octopus launcher, which I feel has so much potential in Japanese cinema. I love how Saints Row takes everything so far over the top. 
We had to help one of our boys with a drug deal and rather than ride in his car, we sat side by side in an attack chopper firing rocket propelled grenades at the peasants below. When we landed, we proceeded to rappel over the side of a building and snipe enemies from a mile away because that's just a cooler way of dealing drugs. I won't even buy weed unless the dealer has two quick scoping alpha chads hanging off the side of a high rise shooting my haters. Anyway, it's time to pull out our Bibles and water bottles and head on over to this strip joint. Using my enhanced situational awareness, I deduce that this is the location. To let you in on the secret, it's the giant swinging prostitute that gave it all away. Wow, look at the kind of people this sinful behavior has attracted. You wouldn't expect a female dominated crowd, yet here we are. So step one is to lull the patrons into a false sense of security. The best way to do this is to become one of them. Marto proceeds to take the stage and deliver one of the most moving striptease performances that has ever been conducted in public. Don't worry, I'm crying emotional happy tears as well. Now with no one suspecting a thing, we proceed to teach these dodgy malakas a lesson they won't soon forget. Maybe next time they feel like going out, they'll go to the bookstore and read a wholesome historical fiction novel about why communism is good, I mean bad. It was very nostalgic playing a Saints Row game again. Feel free to leave a comment down below if there's any games you want me to check out in the future. Thanks for watching you absolute legends and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.